I'm Michael Crossan, and this is the Consumer Reports early review of the 2023 Fisker Ocean Ultra. And we want to start this off by saying today is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. So all the information in this video is current as of this morning. So you've probably heard the name Fisker before, maybe back in the day, maybe in the news now. They used to make a car called the Karma. This is actually a new company, although Heinrich Fisker is still involved, and this is his brainchild. So we purchased a 2023 Fisker Ocean Ultra, and we paid $63,981. That includes a destination fee of $2,438. We did elect a few options, including floor mats, optional wheels, and the paint. This is a matte blue finish. They call it Big Sur Blue, and it costs a whopping $4,500. And yes, you heard that right. It is a 2023, even though it is 2024. And the reason is it took about six months from the time this vehicle was built till it actually got to us. So we need to talk about what it's like to get your hands on a Fisker Ocean. Taking delivery of our Fisker Ocean was not a premium experience. It was delivered damaged, dusty, and dirty. In addition, we were missing the floor mats, and apparently Fiskers come with one key. The next morning, we did have some warning lights displayed in the instrument cluster regarding brake systems, blind spot warning, and lane keep assist. As it turns out, those warnings come and go. Every tester that's driven this car has had a different experience, depending on what systems are actually functioning at the time that they got to drive the vehicle. One of the most surprising things is that this car is here and it actually exists. When you're talking about a startup automotive company, it is difficult to build a car. A lot of companies say they're going to build a car and they never follow through. Fisker did it and we have the vehicle. It's definitely a little futuristic looking. I've been asked multiple times, hey, what are you driving? Hey, what kind of car is that? This is an all electric SUV. It makes 468 horsepower, has a massive 113 kilowatt hour battery pack, and the EPA gives it a rating of 350 miles of range on a single charge. The vehicle actually seems to be put together pretty well. And by that, I mean screwed together pretty well. And that's because it was actually assembled by a company called Magna. They're based in Austria and they assemble a lot of vehicles for manufacturers, most notably the BMW Z4 and its sister vehicle, the Toyota Supra. So this Fisker is unique and it's full of unique features, one of which is they call California mode. You can activate it from your key fob. You can activate it from inside the vehicle on the center console of the roof. It takes just a moment. And what happens is it rolls down all the windows, the back, the side three quarter window, and now we're just waiting on the sunroof to open all the way. Offers a lot of fresh air, lets you cool the vehicle down. Maybe you're having a picnic, having a nice time in a park. Another awesome feature on the Fisker Ocean is that if you want to take a, your pet with you, a dog, for example, you put them in the back, but they like to stick their head out the window. They've got you covered here with this rear three quarter glass. You can say hi to your best friend. This vehicle is fairly quiet, as most EVs are. It does have its own onboard sort of noise generator. You can hear noise from the vehicle outside the car, but it also appears to be like a white noise generator when you're sitting inside the car too. Most of the testers that have driven this car have actually been surprised at how soft the suspension is out on the road. Um, it kind of looks like a sporty vehicle, kind of has Range Rover Evoque vibes to it, so like a sport SUV, but it's actually pretty compliant and pretty soft and offers a decent ride although some people are reporting that um, hard hits can sort of make their way into the cabin and be a little jarring to passengers. So out back in the cargo area of the Fisker Ocean, we have a power lift gate, pretty standard on all SUVs. We have a unique folding floor here, and actually a lot of our testers are praising this design. We can lift up for storage. We can actually fold this forward and it notches in place. So we actually have like little segmented sections for groceries and packages and things like that. If you have really big packages, you can also fold the back row of seats and you have some options. You can fold just the center in case you got a long skinny package to go through there. You can fold two seats, three seats, whatever you need to do. They kind of gave you the room to do it. So the Fisker Ocean is a new school car, but it actually has an old school feature. I like the fact that this back window in the hatch rolls down. You can reach in and grab things really quick or you can load in some awkward items. Let's do it. Before we actually get inside the car, let's talk about this paint real quick. We optioned this matte paint, they call it Big Sur Blue, and we spent $4,500 on this paint, which is kind of crazy. The matte finish of this paint isn't glossy, it isn't slick and smooth the way regular paint is. And because of that, you can't run this car through a car wash that has brushes that are going to touch the paint. It's going to essentially buff the paint and cause shiny spots. So once you're inside the Fisker Ocean, it's a little bit of a mixed bag in here. Some materials are very premium and they feel excellent. Really nice suede texture on the dashboard. Um, the center console armrest feels great. Other materials do feel a little kind of loose and plasticky. So here in the garage, I find the seats pretty comfortable. Some of our testers have um, kind of taken a little bit of an offense to the fact that in a $63,000 car, you don't get leather. 
They've even said that this fabric reminds them of that old suit that doesn't fit that's buried in the back corner of their closet. The rear seat is basically flat, not a lot of side support. Um, you can definitely fit three people back there. If you're the person unfortunately stuck in the center, at least your feet will be flat on the floor. But once we put this vehicle into our test program, we'll really see how these seats hold up. But one very unique feature you'll find in the Fisker Ocean is over here on the passenger side. In the dashboard, where you're accustomed to seeing a glove box, they actually have this little slide out tray, and Fisker calls this the taco tray. So in front of me here is this big chunky steering wheel that feels pretty good in your hands. As we expect, we do have steering wheel controls. We are happy to see a fairly traditional gear shift lever. We do have a rather small driver's display. In some aspects, it's sort of nice. There's not a lot of clutter and there's not a lot of room for oversharing of information, but there are some things in here that we don't love. One of the most distracting features is when you're driving the vehicle, if you're accelerating, it pulses in this sort of red wavy pattern. And if you're braking or are, uh, doing regen braking, it kind of pulses in this blue wave. It's very distracting and kind of annoying, especially at night. So because that driver's display is so small, you're gonna really rely on the center display here for a lot of the information and controls and functions of the vehicle. It is worth mentioning that this vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So you do need to connect your phone via Bluetooth. And so far, every Consumer Reports tester that has driven our Fisker Ocean so far has reported Bluetooth connectivity problems. We do have some buttons here on the side so we can customize what we see here in the center. So under our settings menu, um, we can adjust our steering wheel. We have all kinds of driving settings, in this case, regenerative braking. Another thing to note here, it's set to high and that's what the default is. Anytime you turn the vehicle off, it's gonna automatically revert to high regenerative braking. We have a couple of different ways we can use our climate system. One is through the center touch screen. I have the climate on and I can actually move where the air vents are directed here on the screen. We can't just reach up and do that from the dashboard. Honestly, we don't love that. You have to take your eyes off the road, a hand off the steering wheel to make that happen. But one thing that is nice about it is we do get some physical touch buttons down here on this bottom display. I have rocker switches for temperature on both sides. I can change the fan speed. I have also quick access to both front and rear defrost. So that is a nice touch. But one thing Fisker has done for us here with the press of a button, we have a really cool feature. The screen rotates into a horizontal screen. When I'm trying to kill some time in the car, maybe I'm DC fast charging, I can jump over to YouTube. I can watch basically whatever I want, including my favorite Talking Cars episode. The only thing I could really use is a taco. Awesome. So it hasn't been all smooth sailing on the ocean since we've had it. We have warning lights coming and going. We have safety systems intermittently working and contacting customer support has been less than ideal. So here at Consumer Reports, we often say, don't buy the first model year of a new vehicle. And the reason is building a car is really difficult and sometimes there are some bugs that need to be worked out. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy a Fisker Ocean, but what I am saying is it might be an adventure. We're really excited that we have it. We can't wait to get it up to our 2000 break-in miles so we can start testing it. And as we do with all the vehicles that we purchase, we're gonna put this Fisker Ocean through more than 50 tests, including braking, handling, and comfort testing. Check back at consumerreports.org for all the test results.